Don. This is an Good morning. It's time to uh, start our morning worship service. We're going to start out with a couple songs and we'll have some announcements as everyone still makes their way in the auditorium. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow, down, we bow down, and we worship you, Lord, we bow, down, we bow down, and we worship you, Lord, we bow down, we bow down, and we worship you, Lord, Lord of all, Lord, you will be, you are King of creation and King of my life, King of the land and the sea. You were king of the heavens before there was time, and king of all kings you will be. We bow down, we bow down. and we crown you the king. We bow down, we bow down. and we crown you the king. We bow, we bow down, and we crown you the king. King of all kings you will be. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who lives. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we give. So hallelujah to the King of kings, hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I Am. Good morning, church. We want to welcome everyone here this morning. Wow, good looking crowd. All right. We're switching a lot of visitors, a lot of new faces, a lot of fresh people here. So we're excited to have you here. With that said, uh, and Dave's got two songs in, we've got a number of things to talk about today. So we're going to go ahead and, and hold you know, the major announcements off until the end of service. Uh, so we'll deal with them at that time. But if you're visiting with us today, please fill out a visitor's card so we have a record of your attendance. If you have a cell phone, please put it on mute so that we don't get disturbed the services. And let's go back to singing and worship our Lord. And we want to thank everybody for being here. So, beautiful day. David?
Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a one as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crime that I have done? He groaned upon a tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Is all that I can do at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. <clears throat> Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up because he loved me so he loved me so he loved me so he, he gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days. Because he loved me so, he loved me so, he loved me so, he gave his precious. 
precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Good morning. If you don't mind, I'd like to just reiterate what Chris just said a few minutes ago. It feels good to stand up here this morning and see all these bright sunshine and faces. Just makes me want to jump for joy. So I would like to, or we would like to thank the good Lord for all of the blessings that allowed you guys to be with us here this morning. I have scripture reading and opening prayer. For you guys that don't have the Bible handy, you can find the scripture reading on the back of the bulletin. And if you would allow me, scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 through 57. And it reads, O death, is your victory. Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, all you guys would bow with me. We go to our Heavenly Father for a few words of prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Father, we come before you this morning to thank you for the gift of this beautiful, sunshiny Easter Sunday. And Father God, we are anticipating all of the wonderful things that will go on throughout the day. Father, this is the day that we, as Christians and others throughout the world, have come together to celebrate and commemorate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father God, with, with that thought in mind, we would just like to thank you for sending your son Jesus down on this earth to die on that cruel cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. Father, we are also asking for the forgiveness of our sins. For it is said, Father, in your word, that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So this morning, Father, we are asking for your forgiveness of those sins. Whether they are large or small, seen or unseen, known or unknown. Because one thing's for sure, Father God, we can't hide them from you because you are the all-knowing and all-seeing God. Father, we also offer up a prayer this morning for the needy of the world. I know we, we have all traveled around and seen someone holding up a sign asking for help. It could be your neighbor or friend, or even worse, it could be Father God, someone in our own family. But Father, we just ask that you help us to be mindful of the needs of others, those who are less fortunate than we are. Lord, thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us and help us to always share those blessings with others. Father, we offer up a prayer this morning also for the sick and the shut-in of this congregation. Father, this morning we also pray for those of the congregation who have lost loved ones. 
Father, we pray that if it be your will, that you will just put your loving arms around them and comfort them in their time of need. Father, we also pray for this congregation here at Holmes Road. Father, COVID has been rough. But Father God, we ask and pray that through your help and through your guidance, that this congregation will once again be a strong congregation, a congregation that will be stronger in the future, Father, than it has been in the past. And now, Father God, as we go on with the rest of our services, we ask that you show us the things in your word that you desire for us to see. Father, may those words strengthen us, enlighten us, and guide us. In Christ's name we do pray and give thanks. Let the church say amen. amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where from cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood of I was singing glory to His name Glory So sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in with singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory Precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. When singing glory to his name. Glory. What a 
Good morning, church. We now come to the part of our service where, not just today, but every Sunday morning, we celebrate the sacrifice and the resurrection of our Savior. Before we start, did everyone get a communion cup when you came in this morning? If you need one, could you raise your hand and we'll bring one to you? Knowing what was to come, the night before he was crucified, Jesus instituted this Lord's Supper, excuse me, as described in Luke 22, verses 14 through 16 and 19 through 20. And it reads, when the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you've given us, and particularly for giving your son, whose unbroken body was hung on the cross for us. We ask that you help us to take this bread now in a manner pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you pray with me before the cup? Heavenly Father, we continue our prayer and thank you for the blood that was shed for us that we might be able to live with you forever. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And that concludes the Lord's Supper. We're also commanded to give and to give cheerfully. And <clears throat> I think under, under any measure, we, we're all very rich. And 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 9 tells us why. It says, you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that we have. We we ask that you help us to be able to be generous with with everything that we have, our material blessings, our time, our talents. And we ask you to take this money now that is being offered and Help the elders here that they might be able to use it in an appropriate way for the furthering of your kingdom here. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, your gift of love, they crucify, they laughed and scorned him as he died, the humble king, they Sacrifice the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Good morning, church. He caught me by surprise. I felt there's another song coming. But, uh, it's all right. Glad you're here this morning. Thank you for being here. I know many of you here are here to celebrate Easter with us. But as Bob uh, said earlier, we, uh, we celebrate the Lord's resurrection every single day of our lives, not just one time a year. So we thank you for being here, but we hope that you will be here uh, throughout the year with us in celebration of our Savior. Uh, several weeks ago, I um, began a, a series that was leading up to Easter, and, and today we're going to finish that off, obviously. And we're looking, we've been looking in Isaiah chapter 53, so if you have a Bible, if you'd like to turn there, and uh, that's where we're going to be finishing off this sermon series. Now, if you haven't been in the last couple of weeks, it's pretty easy. I'll fill you in here. First of all, we spent the first week looking at the fact that we have the suffering Savior. And we asked the question, why did Jesus have to suffer? And we looked in Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6 for the answers. And it, Isaiah, 700 years before Christ actually came to earth, prophesied about the Messiah coming. And he told us, the Savior was coming, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, came to suffer on the cross so he could take our pain. This is talking about physical. Many of you have had physical pain in your life, and, and Jesus says, I know physical pain. I can empathize with that. Whatever pain you're going through, I can empathize with that because I've dealt with physical pain. 
And Jesus knows what you're going through, and he wants to help. Jesus also says all the emotional pain. I came to bear our suffering. I came to bear all the suffering that you're going through emotionally, depression, anxiety, loneliness, all the things you struggle with mentally. He says, I'm here to help you bear that. I came to suffer so that you can have someone alongside of you when you're having to suffer these things too. We also found out he came to suffer for our transgressions. And he came to be crushed for our iniquities. And we talked about the difference. Transgressions are those sins that, that you know that, that people have, can see. It's the, it's the sins that, that are out there and people know about. There's evidence. But the iniquities are things no one knows about. The things that you do when you're by yourself in the car. Or by yourself at home and no one can see, no one can hear. Jesus says, I've come to cover all of that. I've come to take care of your sins. I've come to be punished so that you can have peace. So that you can have hope. And that was the first week. Last week we looked at the fact that we have an oppressed Savior. Jesus came and he knew what being oppressed was he dealt with being poor he dealt with uh, being oppressed having unfair treatment because of his religion being unfair treatment because of what he believed in and what he taught and he says i have come why did the savior come to be oppressed because he says i want to come to give dignity for those of you who have been oppressed he came so that we can all have a purpose in our life There may be people who oppress you because of the color of your skin or because of your age or because of your poverty level or whatever it may be. There may be people out there oppressing you. But Jesus says, I came to so you can have purpose in this life. Even if people treat you without purpose, I can give you purpose. He also says, I can give you comfort. I've come to be oppressed so I'll know what it's like so you can turn to me for comfort when people oppress you. And he came to give the oppressed a chance to be born again and have eternal life. And he came to be oppressed so that we can have a stronghold, a place to run to when we're being oppressed. So we can have that fort to go to for protection when we are being oppressed. And those are the things we talked about the last couple of weeks. And we also looked at the fact that Friday, it didn't look too good for Jesus. There he sat on the cross. There he sat bleeding and dying. And he gave up his life. Friday didn't look good. To the disciples, the man whom they had followed for three years, had just suffered the most horrendous death you can imagine. Reserved only for the worst of criminals. And they witnessed this. They witnessed what they believed was the Son of God. Eleven of the twelve of the apostles believed Jesus was the Son of God. They believed it and yet they looked and they saw Him be killed. And we talked last week about how We can just imagine Satan was laughing, smiling from ear to ear, thinking he had won. But that was Friday. On Friday, when Jesus died, the scriptures tell us the disciples went into hiding. They all fled to hide. No one was there to help Jesus as he faced his last hours. Because they feared for their own lives. They thought, here... This is the Son of God, and yet look what's happening to Him. And they know, people know we're His followers. They know we've been with Him the last three years. We're next. John chapter 20, 19 talks about the fact that they they were afraid for their own lives. Thinking, man, what just happened to the Son of God, that's awaiting us. And so you can imagine the fear that they had on that Friday. Things did not look good. Seems into their eyes that Satan had won. We remember the Jewish concept was 
there was going to be this Messiah and he was going to establish the nation of Jerusalem as a political figure and they were going to reign on earth and overthrow Rome. None of that happened. So they didn't understand what was going on. They didn't understand all the prophecies that Jesus had said. Jesus had let them know, I'm going to die and be raised again. They didn't know what he was talking about. All they could see was what the person they thought was going to be the Messiah. He had just died horribly. They're scared. I'm next. And they feel like Satan has won. And they knew that Jesus, who did nothing but love others and serve others, all he did to help people, they knew he didn't deserve that. He, he didn't deserve what he got. He didn't have a fair trial. He didn't deserve to die like some common criminal. Look at Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 10. With that being the understanding. In Isaiah 53 verse 10. It says, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. This aspect of the cross is one that I don't know if we look at too much. This aspect of what Isaiah just told us, (coughs) I don't know if we spend a lot of time thinking about that. But what, what, what Isaiah just told us 700 years before it actually happened, he's saying when God... When Jesus took flesh and he lived on this earth and he died on the cross for me and you, it was all part of a foreknown plan. This was all part of the plan. It was God's will that Jesus was going to be crushed. This is part of God's plan. God said before time even existed, we're going to have create this thing called human. We're going to start with Adam and Eve. And they're going to, they're going to turn their back on us. They're going to sin. They're going to mess up. And they're going to need a way to be redeemed. And we understand there has to be sacrifice. There has to be blood that is shed in order to pay for sin. Because the wages of sin is death. And so before time even began, God said, My son is going to be crushed because of the sin that you have done. It was a foreknown plan. And people say, well, that seems really twisted. What kind of God is this God if he makes a plan where his own son has to go through this? Well, knowing that it was God's will to crush Jesus, it does not mean that God rejoiced in the suffering He just said it was his will. He knew what had to be done. Jesus and God, they knew what the outcome meant. Jesus suffered and died so that we can have peace, so we can have hope, so we can have our sin problem taken care of. Giving us a chance for eternal life with him in heaven. He knows the outcome. And so he's willing To go through all he went through. You mothers have a special understanding of this. When I saw Janda give birth to our three kids, I thought, well, let's start with the first one. When she gave birth to Luke, I thought, oh my goodness. What in the world? She, the horrible stuff she went, and I'm not even just talking about the birth. I'm talking about all the stuff leading up. I mean, the uncomfortableness. We'd be just driving down the road and she'd be like, pull over, pull over. And then she had to throw up or, you know, or the baby's, the baby's foot would step on her body. I got to pee real quick. You know, pull up, find the bathroom. <laughs> and just driving all of a sudden, just crazy stuff. And the um, she couldn't find a comfortable position, so uncomfortable all the time. And then the labor came. And watching that, I got to be in the labor delivery room and and she had to have emergency C-section and I watched the whole surgery. And I thought, my goodness. A week later, and you know the postpartum stuff, I mean the 
the craziness that you ladies have to go through post work to take care of yourself. Going through all that, and she said, totally worth it. <laughs> what? <laughs> totally worth it. Let's do it again. I'm like, what? <laughs> so you ladies can understand that the suffering, the horribleness, the pain, and then to say it's totally worth it. It's because you know the outcome. You know what it led to. And that's exactly what God is saying here. It was part of my plan. I know what's going to happen, but I know what it means. In Acts chapter 2, verses 22 through 24, Paul or, or Luke is writing and he says, Luke is writing in the book of Acts, he says, Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. <coughs> this man was delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. With the help of wicked men, you put him to death by nailing him to the cross. The predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Yes, it was a foreknown plan. What happened to Jesus is no surprise. Jesus was literally crushed under the weight and the pressure of all of our sins, of my sin, of your sin. God who took flesh was crushed because of your bad choices. And he knew he was going to have to do that even before he made you. He loved you so much that he made a plan that says, I'm going to be crushed for you. He is the guilt offering. He shed his blood to take away your guilt and not his he had nothing to have to pay for. He was perfect and innocent. It was my guilt that he took care of. First Corinthians chapter or second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. He was perfect. He was like a lamb led to the slaughter. He was perfect so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Every sin you have done and will do, He nailed on that cross so you can have righteousness. You have to come to Him. You have to give your life in submission to Jesus Christ because He's paid your sin. All He wants is you. You have to come to Him and give your life to Him if you want to have righteousness before God. If you do not come to Him, you won't have righteousness before God. And so that is what you were called to do. Going back to that verse in 53.10, Isaiah 53.10. It says there, it said, it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause to suffer, and though the Lord make his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. I want to talk about that for a second. What does it mean that God is going to prolong his days? It's not talking about eternity. That when the Hebrew word is talking physically, it means that Jesus is going to have prolonged days on earth after his death. It's not talking about, you know, that when he was ascended and now he's in heaven or that mean you'll be in heaven someday. Those aren't counted as days. That's eternity. There are no days in, in heaven. There's no night there's no beginning or ending in eternity. Only time here on earth has days. And so what this is talking about is, is Jesus' 40 days. This is fulfilled when Jesus was raised in resurrection and, and lived on the earth for another 40 days before ascending into the heaven. Isaiah prophesied all of this was going to happen approximately 700 years before it did. And sure enough, we know from the book of John... And the other books, all the Gospels, talk about the days after Jesus was uh, resurrected. That he still 
had walked the earth for another 40 days before his ascension. And then it says there toward the end of that verse, uh, verse 10, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. Jesus's life is one that's going to prosper. People are going to come to God through him. Jesus' death on the cross was not for nothing. It was so that souls will prosper. From then on and in, in, in all of time, people are going to come to Jesus Christ. They're going to come to him and find their salvation in his body and in the blood and be able to have eternal life with God. That's prosperity. Christianity. The church, it will thrive and it will prosper under the administration of Jesus Christ. So Isaiah 53 verse 10 is a very powerful verse. Let us look now at verse 11. Isaiah 53 11 reads, After he has suffered, he will see the light of life. And be satisfied by his knowledge, by righteous servant. My righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Did, did you catch an amazing part of this verse? It says, after he was suffered, he'll see the light of life and be, what? Satisfied. That is an amazing verse. Jesus looked at all his suffering, all the years of oppression, everything he went through, people spitting on him and making fun of him, mocking him, physical suffering, all the stuff he went through, Jesus says, I have no regrets. I'm completely satisfied with the plan. It was a forever plan, and you know what? It was totally worth it. I am 100% satisfied. Because what Jesus says is, my pain, that was your gain. So I have no regrets. Knowing him. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you know him. Then that justifies me and you. Did you catch that in the verse? It says by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many. You want to be justified before God? Then know all you can about Jesus Christ. That's why we're here on Wednesday nights. If you want to study more about Jesus Christ, show up on Wednesday nights, show up on Sunday mornings, get online, watch our Sunday night services, do whatever you got to do to get to know Him. Because the more you know Jesus Christ is the only way you're going to have justification before God. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ, here's the good news. He will continue, as the scripture says, he will continue to bear our iniquities. When you come to Christ and give your life to Jesus, it does not mean that we are perfect. Every single person in here is a sinner, including myself, the elders, the deacons. Every one of us are sinners. We're all hypocrites. I preach a lot better than I live. I am a sinner. Jesus says... Give your life to me, and I will continue to bear your iniquities. I'll continue to cleanse you. That's why Jesus Christ and his sacrifice is so amazing. Not only does it wash all our our, our past sins, it washes our future sins away too. He continues to bear our iniquities. Let's look at the final verse. Isaiah 53, verse 12 says, Therefore... I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressions. You know what this verse is saying? Jesus is victorious. Jesus has the victory. He beat sin. He beat death. He conquered it all for me and you, filling the eternal plan. His team is the winning team. You like to be on a winning team? Have you ever been on a losing team? You know it's not all that fun. 
Jesus says, you come to me, I'm the winning team, I get the spoils. His team is filled with sinners. His team wins because he makes us losers into winners. And that's why we need Jesus Christ. And so the conclusion to the sermon this morning. Jesus suffered. Jesus was oppressed. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. But that's not the end of the story. Jesus was resurrected. And because of that, he won the victory. And because of that, I can have victory in Jesus. Do you have victory in Jesus? If you don't have victory in Jesus, you need to respond this morning. You need to respond this morning and say, I want to join the team of the victorious Savior. I want my sins taken care of. And I want to be baptized into the body and blood of Jesus Christ so I can have my sins in the future continually taken care of. You can do that this morning. You can put Christ on in faith and in baptism this morning. All you need to do is respond in the invitation. And confess your faith and be baptized into the church and into the body of Christ. If you have, many of you have been, have done that. And you've been a Christian a long time, but maybe you have been gone. Maybe your faith has struggled and you just need to come forward and say, I need to rededicate my life. I have not been in submission to Jesus' will. I need to get my life back to correct again, whatever your need is. You come forward now. If you are on Facebook, go ahead and type your prayer requests at this time. It is being monitored and we will make sure your prayer requests uh, get mentioned But the elders are going to be up front. We'll also have an elder in the back. This morning, if you maybe you don't want to come forward, maybe you're afraid of of public stuff. Well, the elders in the back, they'll be happy to meet with you privately. If you just want to talk to an elder and share some things privately, go to the back and an elder will greet you and pray with you and listen to you. But if you have anything you want to say publicly, you come forward and the elders will greet you here. Whatever your need is, now is your time. Maybe you just want to come forward and give a praise. Maybe you have something just so incredible that's happened in your life you want to share it. This is your family time. Let us know as we stand and as we sing together. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus for my part in this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh precious is the flow that makes me 
white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Good morning again, church. Thank you, Stan, for that message this morning. Better sinner than preacher? Good preacher, good preaching. Had to go see uh, Brother J.D. there this morning. He scared me, all dressed in that Michigan. <laughs> but he just come from the hospital, had some things just that, so. Uh, I should be able to get you out of here by noon, make the restaurant time, so we should be good now. We, got, we do have some announcements to go over, uh, some prayer requests. Um, had a note received from Bob Hill. Our four-year-old grandnephew, Oliver, his brain tumor has grown. After traditional treatments, he is now part of an experimental trial. Pray that it works with minimal side effects. So, an experimental trial for the Hill's grandnephew. Michelle's younger brother, Lamont Harvey, had a heart attack Thursday. He's had three stents installed, and he went home yesterday. Pray for complete and speedy recovery. So the Hills have some family members we need to add to our prayer list. We also have a couple of visitors. We have several visitors, but we have two that chose to be recognized or, or put in cards. We have uh, Dora Sherman, which is the mother of Denise Nims. She's here with us this morning. We want to welcome you. And we have Brian Crowley, which is the father of Clayton Crowley. So we want to welcome him this morning. He normally worships with the Waterford Church in, in uh, Goodrich. So we welcome this morning. So. And I know there's many others I see faces. They didn't submit cards, but we welcome everyone, all of our visitors here this morning. So we hope our services were uplifting to you. Couple, let's go to our Father in prayer for those uh, special prayers before we get to some of the announcements. Let's pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you so much for this morning, Lord. We thank you for this glorious day, this day that much of our nation recognizes as a special day, but as we talked already this morning, every Sunday is a special day for us, Lord. We celebrate your your death, your burial, and resurrection each, each Lord's day. Father, we ask your special blessings on, a, on the Hill family and their, their pain and suffering they're going through, Lord, with their grandnephew, Oliver. Um, he's, he's having some problems with his tumor, and he's been agreed to be part of an experimental treatment. And we just pray that he gets through that and there's minimal side effects and that the doctors and nurses and individuals that are attending to his care do so in a loving manner, Lord. Amen. Please be with, with Bob and Michelle as they care for that situation. And also be with Michelle's brother Lamont, who uh, suffered a heart attack this week. We pray that he recovers fully and he is able to return to his normal duties and normal course of life without without much delay. We know that these blessings are in your hands and they will be answered in your way. We just thank you and for the avenue of, of Jesus to, to give us this opportunity to bring them in front of you. And it's in his blessed name that I pray. Amen. In terms of announcements, um, we do have one business need to address. Uh, the church has decided to dispose of our transportation unit, which is the Suburban. Uh, and we have an interested party, but as, as in the past, when we have things available, we want to make sure the whole congregation is aware of it and is, has an opportunity for it. So 
The black Suburban, it's a 2008 uh, Chevy Suburban. I believe it has somewhere in the neighborhood of 150,000 miles. Um, but it is available for sale. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please uh, see one of the elders or see uh, Cliff Tucker. Um, so that wanted to make that sure that was available or known by all. Also, uh, not this morning, but the South Foyer next Sunday will be open for both exit and entry. So if you'd like to use the South Foyer, please go back to that. Uh, we do have a little congestion up here, but that's great. We may have more congestion up here. I got to get, I got to say this. Last week, over 100. This week, 128. I don't know whether you guys know it or not, but elders are compensated on a commission basis per head. And I've got two great numbers going this month, so good job. Thank you. Uh, just joking, man, just joking. Okay, what else did I have? Um, oh, construction update. Um, we are planning to replace the roof. Uh, according to the builders, they're looking for a week of no <coughs> rain. I think they better pray to God for that. Or I don't know where they're going to find it, but we're going we're gonna to try to get that done as soon as possible. We, Stan does have some vacations coming up in May, and he will be off on the 8th and the, 8th and the 15th. Um, I drew the straw for the 8th, and Roger drew the straw for the 15th, so we'll be bringing lessons from the elders during those Sundays. And also, it does not appear we're going to go ahead and postpone uh, or cancel all um, shepherding groups this Sunday, give people the opportunity opportunity to spend time with their families uh, so there will be no shepherding groups including the one here at the building um, so all shepherding groups can take this Sunday's lesson and hold it for to next Sunday so please uh, keep your insert in your bulletin um, also one final announcement uh, kind of personal in nature um, my status uh, as, a, as many of you know I've been transitioning from from work to retirement for the last several months. And we have sold our home here in Michigan. Uh, and I need to vacate that property as of May 12th. Uh, plus, I'm dealing with some of my stronger health problems that I've, ever, that I've had. So this Wednesday, my selfish self went to the elders meeting and tried to tender my resignation as an elder here at Holmes Road. But I was quickly reminded by my brothers that Revelation tells us to be faithful until death. So therefore, I could not produce a death certificate, so my resignation was not accepted. <laughs> Which is wonderful. Thank you. So I will serve as long as I can serve Amen. from now until the good Lord or someone here decides I can't. So I thank you for that, brothers. I thank you for helping me see the air in my ways. Um, and I ask that you continue to keep me in your prayers as I uh, continue to work through this disease. Um, the course of action my strain has taken seems to be a little more up here. So if I'm not with it, kick me in the gear. So um, a little less physical, a little more cognitive. So. I think that's all the announcements I had. I told I'd get you out before the prime restaurants are all taken. So I hope everyone has a, a good afternoon and a good plan for, for Easter Sunday, good meal pro prepared. Don't go wherever the bowlings are going because whoever takes that table is, is going to be there for quite some time. So I think that's the whole bowling plan back there. So We want to welcome all our visitors again. Again. Thank you very much for being here, and without that, with that said, we'll go to our Father in a dismissal prayer. Lord, great Heavenly Father, we, we again come before you this hour in prayer, just lifting this congregation up to you, Lord. Lifting up each man and woman and child gathered here this morning, just to say thank you. Thank you for a beautiful day, thank you for a beautiful service, and thank you for the opportunity to let this world know that your son is alive. That your son came down to this earth and died on a cross, a, a terrible, terrible death for the forgiveness of our sins. The blood he shed so that there, 
does not have need for any more sacrifice. We just thank you so much for that blessing, God. We ask that you be with us as we depart this evening or this morning. We ask that you be with us as we go about our evening hour, that you guide us and comfort us in all that we do, that you, that you forgive us of our sin, and that you allow us, Lord, to be examples to those around us, to let our light shine so that we may touch someone and bring them to you. Father, we thank you so much again for this church. We pray that you watch over us. And it's in your son Jesus Christ that I ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Go forth and be happy.